Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title and the intro, this is what we are going over today. We're going over all three uh, silencers from Aero Precision in the Lahar series. They are 30 caliber, hard use cans, full auto rated, no barrel restrictions, and they are hub compatible as well. They are also pretty reasonably priced and Basically, what do we have here for you? Number one, we have the Lahar 30, which is kind of like the base can. This is a six baffle design. Uh, and then we have the 30K for Kurtz or short, uh, which is a four baffle design. Then we have the 30L for long, obviously, uh, which is an eight baffle design. Like I said, they are steel, stainless steel cans that are designed for hard use. The exception to the material is going to be in the blast baffle, which is Inconel, uh, which is just a little bit more durable. Um, but like I said, Full auto rated, we've ran them full auto. We can't show it to you here on YouTube because that's YouTube. Um, but speaking of YouTube and censorship, this is going to be a Mug Club episode. Uh, so for those who don't know, Mug Club is a place where creators like myself and others can create content without having to worry about that censorship. Uh, folks like myself, Steven Crowder, uh, the Hodge Twins, Alex Jones, uh, Brian Callen, Nick DiPaolo, and I may have left somebody out, not sure offhand if I did, um, but everybody's making content over there now, weekly or daily shows, depending on the actual creator. And uh, again, censorship free, which is the beauty of it. So there will be a link here in the video description if you guys want to sign up and it will get you, the code rather, will get you guys a free month as well. Um, but over there, after this video finishes up, we're gonna take these things apart, show you how that works, the maintenance aspect of it. We're gonna show you how to install hub compatible uh, accessories because we can't do any of that on YouTube. Additionally, we're going to take some questions, all those sorts of things uh, that Mug Club viewers get to do that folks on YouTube just don't get to do. So there is that. And of course, there's like 8 million plus people over there watching. So I do like getting my content in front of those folks as well. Anyway, back to the silencers themselves. Uh, for hard use cans that are actually relatively light uh, with the included mount, and they all do come with a 5 8 by uh, 24 mount on there. They also have hub compatible half by 28 mounts available on their website. Um, so you guys can run that. We've been running one here. This has been ran primarily on 5.56 rifles, um, but they are relatively lightweight. The geese are coming in to talk about the silencers here in this video, but this one here, the K is comes in on my scale anyway, just under 13 ounces with that hub compatible mount. And the L here comes in just over 19 ounces, again, with that hub compatible mount on there. So if you use a different mount or something, it could change out the actual weight on them. And for full auto rated silencers with no barrel restrictions, those are actually pretty lightweight. Additionally, out here in the end, they do have a flash hider end cap. Of course, it is threaded as well, so you could swap that out if you wanted to. Uh, that said, I don't know why you would want to swap out a flash hider end cap. As of right now, I just thought about why. <laughs> as of right now, they're all 30 cal in terms of the end cap. I don't know if Aero Precision has any plans of switching it out for like a 5.56 five, uh, end cap, which could drop the decibel down a little bit, decibel reduction up a little bit, I should say. Um, I'm not sure if that's in the works, but it could be in the works. So that could be one reason why you'd want to. But as of right now, again, all of the end caps are going to be 30 cal end caps and it rated all the way up to 300 wind mag and anything under it is going to be good to go. Again, no barrel restrictions at all. So definitely hard use silencers in that regard. Now we're going to head out to the range. I do have mil spec testing equipment, which very few channels on YouTube do uh, because it's exorbitantly expensive. Um, but we're going to head out and test these cans and see what kind of decibel reduction you can actually get with it. Um, I should forewarn you, I had to cut it to just two silencers because the day we were out there filming, uh, all of my equipment kept going down. I had cameras go down because of the heat. I had my DB meter go down because of the heat. I had a uh, chronograph go down because of the heat. It was hot. So we just tested these two cans just to kind of get an idea. And obviously this one is going to be in the middle, but let's see what kind of results we get out of these silencers. Just for expediency, we're gonna run the K and then the full configuration here out of the 300 Blackout AR-15. This one, fold AR, is an eight inch barrel. And uh, in the gun, we have some subsonic 220 grain TMJ Fiocchi from the folks at Firearms Depot. They are now sponsoring all the ammo here with the exception of nine millimeter. So we definitely appreciate that. Check them out. They have lots of good deals on ammo. I share them all the time on social. So there is that. We have the mount here, uh, 1.6 meters off the ground. The meter itself is one meter to the left, so mil spec testing configuration. I'm on a little bit of a hill, but uh, we're just trying to get out of the sun. It's so freaking hot. Um, but regardless, let's get to shooting it. Ah, well, I didn't account for the fact that I have the Wolt Carrier Group set up for suppressed shooting. 
That'll be fun. For those that don't know, that is a bootleg uh, bulk carrier group, adjustable bulk carrier group, so it's not the fault of the gun at all, or the ammo or anything like that. I'm just too lazy to change it. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna throw on the K-Can. Everything is the same with the exception of the can. We're going to remove that and then add on the long configuration. Everything is the same with the exception of the can. Let's get to it. No doubt about it, size matters. Uh, you know, it was hearing safe with the K, but what that hell, it's silly hearing safe. There's a couple points I wanna make from the actual meter results that we just saw there. Number one, they were in line with what both Aero Precision has published, and they're also in line with the data that we've seen from the field folks over at Pew Science. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out PewScience.com, I recommend it. They're not a sponsor or anything like that. It's just really good data um, on silencer testing. And Jay over there does a fantastic job running that site and doing the uh, presentation he does. And he's tested so far uh, this silencer and this silencer. And uh, the results, again, have been in line with my testing as well so that is good you kind of see everything lining up in the silencer industry there is a lot of smoke and mirrors about decibel reduction quietness and things like that uh, that's why i think it's nice to have someone like myself uh, and someone like jay who actually has the equipment and who can do the testing independently and we've done it and these cans did very well particularly considering price point which we'll get to here in just a second obviously this one uh five Five shot average still coming in under 140 decibels on an eight inch barrel. Not mad about that. This one coming in stupid quiet on that eight inch barrel. Now, one thing I should point out, I probably edited it out just due to time during that video, but the actual cycling of the gun, it was, like I said, it was tuned for uh, supersonic ammo and this silencer and it ran that obviously just fine injecting at three, four o'clock. But with the subs, uh, this one even got it to cycle. So that brings me to the next point of these are not flow through silencers, right? So they're tr traditional style uh, silencers, but they do have a unique baffle design from Arrow, which is one reason I think they've performed so well. Um, but obviously as you increase the amount of silencer, if you will, um, going down the list, as you increase it, you are gonna get more back pressure in there. So if you're running like an AR-15, just know that you know the amount of quote unquote gas in the face and things like that and just dirt and debris in the chamber will increase. Now, of course, if you're running a bolt action rifle or a lever action rifle, that point is moot. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you want to set it up on. I think a lot of folks are going to run these on bolt action guns just due to their design uh, and their durability. Um, now, I actually polled my viewers on Twitter of which of these you could pick up if you could only have one. And it seems everyone, not everyone, but a large percentage of people out there want sort of the Goldilocks here, which is the standard size. Um, and it is, in terms of what you guys saw for performance and decibel reduction, a can that performs above its size, right? So you can look at my data that I've done on a bunch of 30 cal silencers. You can go over to Pew Science and check their stuff out. And basically the results we've seen with these cans is that they perform similar to other quote unquote good cans that are about an inch longer. I should also point out that these are not very wide cans. They're pretty much standard, if you will. So the actual outside diameter of all of these cans is 1.58 inches. So for folks who wanna snug it up under a rail on an AR-15 or something like that, most of them, most of the rails out there, you'll be able to do it unless you're going with like a super skinny rail, um, but your traditional free-floated rails. You should be able to sneak it up under there, which I know a lot of guys like because it does look cool. Now, of course, I mentioned earlier, price point on these was attractive. I believe the MSRP on this one's like $749. And this one here, the K is like $549. And this one's like $649. That's MSRP. Street price, that's absolutely not true. Street price, these things are coming in at killer deals. If you guys are following me on my social media, you've seen in particular, the K-Can has been on fire sales lately. Uh, mid 300s are not uncommon, sometimes even lower. Um, and if you think about uh, sort of like 
performance that you get for the price point for a 30 caliber can, uh, that is insane. Um, other, you know, comparable cans to this, the one I kind of think of when you think of like a hard use compact can is the Dead Air Sandman K. And even if you were to add a chemo mount to it, you're still coming in with the current real world street pricing. You're still coming in with a can that is cheaper than the Dead Air Sandman K has the same sort of hard use pedigree, if you will, and also comes with a flash hider, which from Dead Air, and I'm not dogging Dead Air, I love the Sandman K, it's a great can, um, but from Dead Air to get the flash hiding end cap is an extra, I think $50 or something like that. So um, you do get a lot of silencer for your money. Uh, that is my opinion based on everything we've seen. The performance, again, in terms of volume of the can, they perform extremely well near the top of anything that we've tested so far. So all in all, guys, I think these are excellent cans. Uh, again, they perform as well as many that are either larger or cost considerably more. Uh, the downside for mo many of you out there who are watching this, of course, is going to be twofold. Number one, like we talked about, it does give you some additional gas in the system if you're running it on a semi-auto. And number two, uh, silencers are regulated under the NFA in America. So for each one of these, you'll have to pay a $200 tax stamp, which is completely unconstitutional. Um, taxing a right is expressly or, or I guess uh, specifically unconstitutional in addition to the Second Amendment violation that the uh, NFA is. Um, but we are working through that, guys. Folks like myself and many others are trying to educate the American public and get judges to go our way to hopefully remove the NFA from American law. And I think we have a decent shot if we all keep going. I was just editing the video and noticed one thing I didn't point out that I should have is that the markings back here on the silencers are towards the rear where it mounts to the actual rifle. So what's nice about that is if you have a baffle strike out here at the end for whatever reason, uh, you don't need to redo the whole NFA process. You can send your silencer back to Aero Precision. They can chop it off wherever that weld is, put the new baffles in there, and then send it back to you because your serial number stays back here. So that is one of the benefits of the design. Like I mentioned on my social medias early, earlier, if you guys had to pick one of these, which one would you pick and why? And my answer to that question of if you could only have one, I tend to go K because I tend to view everything as sort of like a fighting rifle, if you will. And in that instance, I prefer to just have a shorter silencer to not make it quite as long um, and not quite as front heavy. But I realize everyone's answer to that is different. A lot of you guys want maximum sound suppression. So you're gonna go with this even for a fighting rifle. In no way would I ever say you're wrong. Just let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'll be looking forward to it. And with that, we're gonna close the video out here, the free portion on YouTube and Rumble. And uh, then after that, we're gonna head over, answer some questions, show you how to disassemble these things, all of those sorts of things over on Mug Club. But if you guys like this type of video and you're not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, your eyes are being censored by an algorithm because I put it up every week. I'm extremely consistent, if nothing else. So to combat that algorithm, you can either follow me on all my other socials because I do share the videos when they're new on my social media. And you can also sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out every month, just once a month. So it's not super spammy or anything like that, but it has all of the videos since the previous month's email went out. Uh, so that way there's no big tech algorithm censoring your eyes for my content, even if I get removed from YouTube I still publish videos. This has happened before. This is not a new thing. Um, but even if I get removed, I'll still publish them and the email will go to your inbox so you can see my content. Additionally, if these things go on sale, anything like that, uh, Again, the K has been on a bunch of sales lately, which has been awesome. Uh, those sales go out in my daily deals email. The email itself goes out every day. As the name indicates, it has eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it's in that email on that particular day, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere period of, of the product, whether it be silencers, ammo, rifles, handguns, optics, whatever the case may be. Uh, so that way it saves you guys some money because I've already done all the price comparisons for you and also hopefully saves you some time because again, I've done all the checking for you so you know it's a good deal if it's in the email. And with that, we're going to close it out here and head over to Mug Club. Piss off YouTube.